Assalamu alaikum. In the last three presentations, we've been through uh, techniques and methods uh, to prevent a dog ear from forming at a wound uh, while suturing it. And this would no doubt reduce the incidence of dog ear development, but it would not bring it to 0%. There will still be a small number of cases with dog ears that are going to form, particularly in long wounds, wounds with excess subcutaneous fat, wounds on concave or convex surfaces, and inevitably you will get dog ears if you are doing local skin flaps like advancement or rotation flaps. The ways dog's ears are corrected um, would depends on two things, its type, whether it is a full cone or half cone, and its height, whether it measures less than eight millimeters, 15 millimeters or more. And according to this, you can decide whether to observe the wound, just wait for spontaneous resolution of the dog ear, or sometimes you have to do simple measures like re-suturing of the wound distribution of the stitches uh, along the wound uh, in an even way, or defatting the wound edges, removing excess subcutaneous tissue. But in other situations, if the uh, dog ear is too big, then you would need to extend the uh, the original incision, either in a straight line manner or in a hockey stick, and excise a bit of tissue to flatten the dog ear deformity. And in other situations, you would have to remove an elliptical piece of skin around the full core of the dog ear in order to flatten the wound. And there are other novel techniques to try and sort out this deformity as well. Prevention is, of course, better than trying to treat a dog ear after it is formed. A good wound design um, that entails um, marking a good elliptical or fusiform shaped wound with uh, a good ratio between its length and width and uh, uh, perfectly angulated angles at the apices and also equal lengths for the wound edges and distribution of the stitches evenly across the wound would all help in preventing the formation of the uh, um, dog ear. M plasty and S plasty that we've discussed in previous presentations would also help in the uh, prevention of the dog ears and maximum preservation of the tissues. But if dog ears are encountered at the end of the procedure, um, then the first thing to do is to identify its type, unilateral or bilateral, full cone or a half cone, and its height. And if the height is less than eight millimeters, then there is a good chance this is going to settle on its own, regress spontaneously. And if we just need some observation, um, and the majority would settle, but if some of them don't, they, this can be sorted out under local anesthesia. The other thing you can uh, consider if you are if you're having a small uh, dog ear as to re-suture your wound uh, try and distribute the stitches evenly using the rule of halves but if the um, height of the cone is more than eight millimeters uh, but less than 15 then something has to be done and there are for less than 15 millimeters you can do the simple things uh, try and remove the excess subcutaneous fat uh, from the wound. Uh, and this is going to help in flattening of the skin and the disappearance of the dog ear. Or you just open up your stitches and try and redistribute them in a better way. And this can save you uh, trying to excise a dog ear just by redistributing the dog ear across the entire wound length. But if the height of the cone is more than 15 millimeters, uh, then you would need to excise a part of the excess skin. And depending on the type of the uh, dog ear, whether it's a half cone uh, or a full cone, you will decide the next step. For half cones, a straight line extension of the shorter line of the two would help in creating the uh, small triangle. Here you see the wound is um, 
uneven with a shorter and a longer side and you can see that a small cone half cone here has formed this is more than 15 millimeters so what you do next is just try and extend the original incision from the shorter side of the wound um, towards the uh, cone of the uh, dog ear uh, and you make it sort of a gentle curve in there and once the incision is extended you'll be left with a triangular flap of excess skin formed from the longer side of the wound and that flap would have to be trimmed in order to flatten the, the wound and sort the dog ear. So this is the flap of the tissue that you have it on the long um, axis of the wound and you just try and fold it over the uh, incision and you can mark the excess tissue, usually triangular in shape, that has to be removed. And once this is removed, you will find that the shape of the wound is now fairly symmetrical like the traditional elliptical uh, incision configuration. Once the wound is unfolded, this is the traditional type of the uh, elliptical wound. The same example, if you have a half cone um, dog ear, more than 15 millimeters because of um, asymmetrical wound edges with one long and one short. And you can try extending the shorter uh, edge of the wound in a hockey stick manner rather than straight line excision. You can see here that you have a dog ear formation on one side. Now you go to the shorter side of the wound again and form an angle of anything between 45 and 60 between the extension and the original uh, line for the shorter side of the wound would give you this 120 to 140 degrees uh, between the extension and the original. Uh, this is like a hockey stick. And when you do this, you have freed up a triangular flap of excess tissues that can be folded over the wood edge and then can be marked to know exactly how much you would need to uh, uh, remove. And once you trim this uh, bit of tissue, usually triangular in shape, then you have transformed the uh, geometry of the wound to the classic elliptical shape. As you can see, and this is the excess tissues removed from one side. So this is the other way of sorting out a half cone um, and dog ears more than 15 millimeters. You just extend the wound like a hockey stick rather than in a straight line. You make it with an angle and when this is incised you have created a triangular flap of tissue that you undermine a little bit and then fold it across the wound edge to see how much excess tissue need to be removed. And once this is trimmed, you get a fairly symmetrical uh, wound, elliptical in shape. When the type of the dog ear is a full cone, again with a height more than 15 millimeters, then perhaps trying to excise an elliptical part of the cone would flatten the wound. Um, so what you do here is you mark um, a line on both sides of the uh, dog ear, uh, one on each side because this is a full cone, And you try and merge this line smoothly with the original excision. And once this is removed, then you've transformed the wound geometry into the classic um, elliptical shaped incision. You'd see it on the other side, something very similar. 
you just mark an elliptical part of skin that will have to be excised together with the cone, uh, the full cone in its middle. So all what you need to do is this elliptical part of the skin centered on the wound will be just un excised. Again, when you incise one side, you can free the flap and you could mark where you would want to excise the other side as well. And this will give you the flat wound that can be sutured easier. One another elaborate way of sorting out the dog ear problem is uh, the VY advancement flap. Uh, what happens here is that rather than removing this triangle piece of tissue and throwing it away, the triangle piece of tissue that would have could have formed a dog ear, you, you, rather than excise it, you just incise along its border, much like what you when you are doing the elliptic one side of the elliptical or the fusiform wound. But don't incise, but don't excise the skin. You've just marked the incision lines along its borders and kept it attached to the subcutaneous tissue where it is based. So that it will be its pedicle is the, its base. And then slide this triangular piece of skin towards the center of the wound uh, where the initial defect and the safety margin was excised. The initial lesion and its safety margin was excising here. So you just slide this uh, triangular piece of skin into the central part of the defect. Uh, and when you do that, you would leave, um, you would expose this small part towards the apex of the triangle where the triangle was lying initially. But this can be stitched easily uh, in a straight line. So at the end, you'll be left with, rather than a V-shaped incision, you get a Y with a stem where the initial triangle has moved forward and the two sides of the V, uh, so you, you have a, a Y rather than a V, but what you gained is that you've not, uh, you, you have spared this triangular piece of skin and used it to fill up the uh, a gap in the middle part of the wound, and you have also prevented any dog ear uh, formation. It's often used in areas like eyelids and cheeks and nose where it's very important to preserve as much skin as possible. And recently, this uh, three bite technique was suggested as a way of uh, correcting a dog ear uh, after it forms towards one end of the suture line. Now, rather than excising this excess part of the skin, uh, you try and flatten this. And the way to do it is to pass three bites of uh, your suture, one, the initial bite in the subcutaneous tissue to anchor this subcuticular uh, stitch. And once it's anchored deep into the subcutaneous tissue, this is the first bite, you can take the second bite from one end to the uh, other end of the, of the base of the conical um, dog ear, and then you come to the surface, reinsert it, and pass it into the longer side of the um, dog ear. Again, much like what you'll be doing in a subcuticular stitch. So you'll have three bites, one to anchor into the subcutaneous tissue deeply, the second bite into the shorter side from almost one end to the other, and the third bite into the longer of the two sides of the dog ear, again, from uh, almost one side to the other. And by doing this, um, you have not excised any tissues. Uh, it would still look a bit uh, heaped up at the end of this, but hopefully over the next few weeks, it starts because of the way the tension uh, of the healing is going to uh, flatten up this uh, elevation of the dog ear. Uh, this has been suggested recently. We've been through the various ways and techniques to try and prevent dog ear formation in the first instance. 
and to try and sort it if you are encountered with it at the end of the suture line and uh, depending on its type and its height. Salam alaikum.